Yehova Malak Olam Olam Ad Yehova Malak Yami Rakes The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upward unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In order to understand the good will of Lord God, the Father, every believer has been given on this earth after salvation, that is, by faith alone in Christ alone, believing in the Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, a great certain amount of time, the time wherewith he can master the entire Bible, the time that has been given for him to conquer, the word of the Lord of a God. But being aware every breath of his life to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to rise above the standards, what we have been called in the church age, as never before, the greatest responsibility to honor the Lord God because of the greatest and the unique Plera of Paltima privileges bestowed upon this church age. Dear brethren, keeping these things in mind, we need to live a life. The life wherewith he has called us in eternity past, before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless. A life where he has called us to be always mindful about the good works what he has created as to be his workmanship, Ephesians 2.10, an habitable place, a workmanship wherewith he has designed us to walk in the good works, and the good works he has distributed in the church age, after the completion of the canon of scripture, highest rank pastor teacher, Next, the evangelist, or both can go together, evangelism and pastor teacher. And then the gift of helps, administrations. In the permanency of the spiritual gifts after the completion of the canon of scripture, the first duty as a pastor teacher, what he shows forth for us in Mark 6.34. If the present Christendom believers who are walking in apostasy could wake up, what Christ my Lord God has done for the enhancement of this church age, because the consistent theme of the Bible is always to make disciples. Even in the past he wanted them, the people Israelites, to go back and evangelize the world, but they failed. In the church age, it is our privilege and our duty now to go back and evangelize the world. Not only just to evangelize the world, but also to make disciples. If we don't incur our obligations, why we are failing? 
we are surely insulting the grace of my Christ. We are insulting the authority of our Lord bestowed upon us to trample Satan under our feet. And we are surely insulting to show before Lord God that we are not trustworthy for this task what you have bestowed upon us. The reasons are very simple. Point number one, your ignorance. Point number two, not having your attitude to learn the word but rather thinking. The Christian way of life is just like the nominal standards. As the other religion people walk in the mind of the religiosity, that's what you're planning, that's what you're thinking, that's what you're executing, that's it. And as long as you fail to understand, the Christian way of life demands the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The Christian way of life demands always to be in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is nothing but if ever you live, you also need to walk in the Holy Spirit. And if all God, the Christian way of life is not only just to walk in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but to march in it. Sto icon in the Hebrew, in the Greek. The reasons why you are not inquiring for your obligation not to walk like Christ on this earth. As Satan blinds the eyes of these unbelievers not to know the true gospel, causing you to be in this world and executing this life as children of lies. That's what many people are, children of lies. If they were the true children of my Christ, they wouldn't be under their father, who is called as father of lies. In these days of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the great and the unique privilege of our given for this church age to continue in truth, to reign in truth, to make the things pertaining to Lord God, the Father, only in truth, because we are no longer to be as the children of lies. Not only the procedure for you to know what is Barak, blessing, to kneel down in his presence. Many people in the present Christendom have lost not only kneeling down, but also they have lost the power, what we call in the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher in training you all up in the word of truth. This is very great problem for us. The church have forgot the first principal point to become the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God, kneeling is needed a lot. That's what he says the psalmist in his great prayer. In Psalm 119, in verse number 12, he teaches to us, I barak your name before thee, O Lord. Teach me thy coke, necessary ordinances prescribed by Lord God to live a life on this earth. Teach me that. I don't want to be like dross. Teach me good doctrine, sound doctrine, so that I can prosper on this earth. As valiantly as you have said, with Lord God we shall do valiantly. Teach me sound Bible doctrine, he says. I will become thy lama. I will become to you a mantano, and you become my teacher, Didasco. The sad part what we look in Mark 6.34 because we usually don't look as the viewpoint of my Christ or the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in penning those scriptures for us. Because in the present Christendom many people have lost because they don't want to look in the divine viewpoint. They want to look and neutralize only in the human viewpoint. 
for the first cry of my Lord, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. He bought forgiveness for us. The prayer he prays, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. And when we read from Joel chapter 2, verses 10 through 14, the eschatological event, what it will happen after the second advent of my Lord. There, when he opens up his mouth, the very thing what the proverb writes, the tongue has the power of life and death, he is fulfilling there. In the first advent, he prays, Father, forgive them, they know not, and he cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. In the second advent, my Christ, he cries, whenever he opens up his mouth. It's not for forgiveness, but for your death. And the principle why Lord God has penned and kept the past, the failure of the Israelites, the future, what it would be if they reject the everlasting gospel for them, what will be their fate and where they are going to spend their eternity. In the future he has written that and he has revealed us now in the completed can of scripture to be taught by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher so that we could set right the rest of our time, the remaining part of our life. This great Kairos time given to us to redeem every day in this chronological process, redeeming our time, we need to prepare ourselves and to be thoroughly fit. As he says in Ephesians 5, as imitators of Lord God, as dear beloved children, you walk there. And in Colossians, he says, walk worthy of your calling. Just to examine every breath of your life where you stand. Just to analyze and look what was the purpose of Lord God in giving us this eschatological information as well as the past dispensation information for us so that we could correct our life in the way that we need to go. And make up our standards to understand Mark 6, 34, to be the order of our life. And that's what we need to look. We shall continue that after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the pale wonders of the great word of the Lord of our God and the unique word of the Lord of our God, which has to be taught always dogmatically and emphatically because it's infallible and inerrant all the days for us. We are errors. We are fidelity. But Lord God's word is inerrant. It's always the same in the original languages of the scriptures. The great stumbling block, what you need to change, your thinking, your set vocabulary, what you have. You have fixed up your minds in the thinking, what you are thinking today. You haven't seen why Christ of Lord of God cries out in Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3 to renovate the standards of your thinking after the knowledge of Bible doctrine so that that which is good, perfect and acceptable in the sight of Lord God you need to perform not in the sight of men, what men they have except breath in their nostrils, except human excreta and urine in them. And you love to please your fellow alls in nature, morons appreciating morons, coming under the bunch of a tag head called as ravadas, reverends and doctorates, which is no way concerned in the Bible, because that's what we look for the title of my Christ, for his essence. And this man they have come to clothe you as whitewashed tombstones they wear. They have come to daub you with untempered mortar. But they haven't come to teach you what is truth in Christ. Therefore you need to be aware. You are not a kid any longer. You are called as an adult son in Christ. You are huyos. You cannot be brephos, neither pedias. When you fail to constantly cross-check your life and examine your life, what is it, the word of the Lord of a God? What are the divine standards for us in Christ? The greater you fail to cross-check your life, 
the greater you will not reach to the status called as Neoniscas under the age of 40 to be well mature. And Neoniscas people who haven't learnt the seriousness of this life, who haven't understood the call of the Lord, who haven't known what is that they need to agar from the sleep and look that the salvation of my Christ is so near to them. And since we are the children of light and not of dark, we need to walk in light and not in darkness. We need to wake up from our sleep and perform that which is right and perfect to the praise of His glory to the highest. And we are inexcusable if you don't come to the maturity because after Neoniscas you will grow up to the standards known as Tekna. Every day you will come to carry your cross and follow my Christ. You will realize nothing on this earth is more important than to the will of Lord God the Father because Lord God has chosen the foolish people of this world to confound the wise. And we cannot be wise in our own conscience, but rather we need to be the men where Lord God the Father in heaven has called for us to show forth his glory to the highest. We need to be the men. And we need to be the people where Lord God would call us that these are my children like the beloved son Christ was because he is loving with the same love what he loved his son. And as we read in Hebrews chapter 11 that Lord God is not ashamed to be called their God because of such great and unique privileges given to us in this church age. Lord God shall never be ashamed to call us his sons when we know that we shall never be ashamed on this earth for sinning against Lord God. But rather we are here being kept alive no matter what it would cost in our life to honor Lord's word above his name. It may cost your death. Hold on to the integrity. Don't weep and wail like the way how Job was not knowing what is happening in the futurity. He knew only one thing was put in test. He was not knowing that. He was proving his integrity, holding fast to it. But now we know in the completed account of scripture, the very first man, Job, and his witness for us in Job 1.1. 1, 1. Have you seen this man who fears Lord God? Yare 3373 code of the strong number. Satan says, why will not he fear you? 3372 again the word Yare in the Hebrew. 3373, Lord God's fear, godly fear man. 3372, what Satan says? He is a worldly fearing man. He will lose his prosperity, he will lose his name and fame. Therefore, he is fearing you and giving you sacrifices. Besides, given to us such great privilege to be greater than John the Baptist in the church age, and the keys have been given for us to handle Lord's God word accurately. And to live a witness of truth, because these are the days of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And every breath is accountable, dear brethren. This is not of your own, he says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. You are bought up with a great prize. We need to glorify the Lord of our God, he says, because we are here to judge angels. How about the matters of this earth before you? They are nothing. The word what we can learn, to whom the word of the Lord of our God came, he says, you are God's, G-O-D-S, small g. And that's the word Elohim again in 430. Because wherever and whenever we speak, we speak the word of truth and the very word what you speak, that's God for them. Thus you cannot add anything to it, neither we can delete anything from it. What the word says, no matter what, however the chips may fall, speak the truth, not for convention or not for conviction, not for the point of impressing others in your denominations. If the Bible says no ravidas, then who are we to keep ravidas and cheat the flock? Do you have any compassion upon the flock? And yet, you people come in the pulpits to stand. No problem, come. But with the right heart, with the perfect heart, with the standards of Bible doctrine, you come and serve the Lord. Or do you want to become like the way which the world is running about today in our pulpits. Let's be the people for Christ, where with Lord God the Father could have his delight, at least like a small remnant. From Tekna, let's grow up to become adult sons. 
because Christ our Lord our God has given on this church age this great burden besides given to us this great pillar of Baltimore privileges not only just to go and evangelize in the past dispensation work but the present dispensation work to make disciples of all the nations if you are not minding in those terms you will never understand the term what has been used for us that Lord God has compassion compassion can your eyes look in the present Christendom towards the Lord's wife that is the church the future wife it will be do you have any compassion upon this universal church basic building blocks the local churches if they are perfect every believer is a living stone in the church if that every believer as a living stone in Christ is able to be worth enough for the Lord do you know we could have compassion as joined together as universal churches as churches of Christ or the church of Lord if it is not the church of my Christ then your church is not a church by that we meant to say if it is not the mind of Christ reigning and ruling over there it's not the church of Christ it will be the church of Antichrist likewise you are being the temple of the living Lord of a God being bought with a great price if you don't cause the word of the Lord of a God to reign in you to cause to grow up in you then your body will be now not the temple of living Lord God but it will become the temple of Baal foolishly you are living your life because if it is not a church of Christ then it will be church of Antichrist against or instead of the word of the Lord and the present trend what we are looking today in our pulpits they are not worried about the universal church they're not having any compassion upon how they have to train every believer to make perfect and complete and to be thoroughly furnished in all doctrine to Christ they're not at all worried what will be the fate when we stand in his presence and not done his work will he call us faithful though we have been qualified to be saved by faith alone in Christ alone will he call us to be faithful he doesn't want you to be still in the standards of milk he wants to grow up from milk to bread and from bread to strong meat and yet you have two paths in your mind all the way one end that leads to hell the other end that glorifies God the Father while here on this earth manifesting the heaven and you don't want to walk on this path because in order to walk in this path you need to judge yourself every breath of your life getting every thought into captivity for Christ and knowing the will of Lord God the Father and doing the will of Lord God the Father what does the Bible say you have to go and ask your pastor teacher I want to take this decision what does the Bible say in this show me the proper exegetical thoughts on that if Lord God had compassion on his flock and his mercies will never end he says in Lamentations 3 then up to what extent I'm really worth enough to be in the Lord's kingdom up to what extent I'm adding to the glory of the Lord or I'm adding something which is not glory but except making the name of my Christ dreadful among the heathen you have made it to become blasphemous that will be a reward don't worry they will find anything which is in not in accord with Bible doctrine Lord God doesn't want that in the pulpit if not that church is a church of Antichrist it is not the church of my Christ neither it is the wife of the Lord anything I we call in the Bible Romans 16 churches of Christ and many idiotic morons will become elders for the churches of Christ who are running their business it's nothing but pure business having a set of doctrine for them comparing and going and saying we will not call pastor we will call only evangelist or we will call you as a brother 
If the Bible calls Poimeno as a pastor teacher, the bona fide gift, though you call him as a brother, what difference does it make for you, you may think? There is a lot of difference in that. Because a pastor teacher along with him comes the responsibility as we read in Mark 6.34 to teach many things. That's the problem. To teach many things. He had compassion not for the food so that they can have 12 baskets full of the remaining food to be carried. In Mark 6.34 though he might have done in the Gospels which are synoptic. Yet he teaches to us over here a great mandate. The great mandate which is nothing but he had compassion because they were like probota, sheep, without having what? Ravadas. That's what the present people will think. No, without having pastor, poor man, without having shepherd. What is the duty of the shepherd? There we learn. What is the principal duty when Christ our Lord of our God says to Apostle Peter in John 21 verses 15 through 17 Feed, tend, feed, bosco, poiman, bosco. Even in the dying declaration of Peter, in Paul, we read 2 Timothy. When Paul says in his dying declaration, as well as even in Peter as well, we find both. First taking the occasion of Paul, he says, Preach the word, carry Soton Lagan. What? Entire mystery doctrine, Colossians 4, 2 through 4. And Peter, what does he say? Be mindful of the word spoken by the Lord of our God through these prophets and apostles. Before in hand you have this information, therefore you correct your life. The futurity deals with the righteousness of Lord God. Practice that righteousness, not the self-made righteousness on this earth, which is telling you that you are church of Christ, but you don't have the mind of Christ in that church of Christ. And instead of church of Christ, it should be called as church of Antichrist. The duty of the shepherd is to teach. The duty of the shepherd is to teach not few things, not oligo, but much, many things. The land, the breadth, the height, the depth. Do you know what is that? The much variegated wisdom of my Christ, the manifold wisdom of my Lord. He says in Ephesians 3 verses 8 through 11. And that is not when you go back home right now in the church. The church has to teach to you. From Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. Therefore, we find in Revelation 20 to 11 for us the one who is unjust, Adikias, let him be still Adikias. But the one who is Rufo, let him be still Rufoas, because his thinking right from his birth is criminal, crooked. Not only he defiles, he wants even others also to be defiled. And the one who wants to be just, let him be still just. Go on, continue what the word says, whether they may be hears or forbears. Why you worry what the people will think? What the word says, he had compassion on the sheep without shepherd. And he went to teach many things, says the word of the Lord of our God. Many things, Paulas, much. Today, what have you learned in your life of your history, going to your churches of denominations? And recently people have come to the churches of Pentecostal backgrounds, charismatic Gospels, Prosperity Gospels. And as we noted yesterday, one of the brother who met, as we have been told in the tape as well, who went to New Walk to, has, to have his ordination under Episcopal and ministry. And this brother comes from my place. And these usually have a background which is not according to, from the fathers in the word of the Lord. They just get converted. And you know, so easy stuff when they say, I've been a background of some other religion and now I'm coming to Christ, help me. And he has a long set of emails given to so many people in and around the world. And this man wants to prove that even the doctrine being taught by some is wrong because he thinks as if he knows a lot of doctrine. And when they go in the web, you find other idiotic morons in and around the world who don't have any other time. 
except to spend some time thinking that my grandfather's property, my grandmother's property, I'm also earning. Let me do the work of the Lord. Let me carry my cross. Okay, let me do at least giving some money to these poor people running through NGOs or XYZ terms. So, for such man, they will search. And this man will get in contact with those people. For what? Only for begging money. That's it. Nothing else than that. Because it's an easy way. They say, monthly support you provide for us. We are doing the work of the Lord. And such morons who are abroad, they send monthly. And this man, the way how he was earlier, but now he looks not wearing less than 20 or 30 grams of gold chain in his neck. And those people who are there should ask, earlier you didn't have anything, from where did you get that now? The offering is being sent for him. And the way how they appear, the way how they look, and these idiotic morons want some other morons to ordinate them, so they go with their expense. And this moron says, I was the only one out of the 19 men who have been ordained to take an answer out of 100 questions that in the Bible there are 66 books. And the one who's ordaining him, empty hands upon, laying empty hands upon empty heads, he says, you are the only one who answered that question because in the Bible there are 66 books. And then, though the passing marks are 50, he says, it's a grace upon me, I got 49, then too they considered me, and they gave me this ordination, and I have this certificate for me. Do you have really compassion to the Lord? Do you have really compassion towards the Lord's work? Does your heart prick? What you're doing is right. Do you have your consciousness? Or it has been seared up with the way how the word says for us. The conscience has been seared up with hot iron. You don't have any conscience. Do you have the heart of stone? Or you have a heart of flesh? Can't you look what are your standards? And when they are having in and around in this prosperity gospel, charismatic gospel, such men around the world, being promoted by such other idiotic morons who are going through and running with that Episcopalian ministries. Do you think apostasy in the church age could be ended? Or will the church end in apostasy itself? Can't you know what the word is? Can't you know what is the church of Christ? Can't you know the burden of my Lord when he had compassion upon that people calling them as Proboda, sheep, and he's saying, they were as a sheep without a shepherd. Poimeno, the word. For Christ, even in Hebrews 13, we read, the chief shepherd of the sheep, he is also Poimeno, he cannot be Ravda, though he's having the essence of reverence. And what did he do when he had compassion upon that sheep without having a shepherd? He gave them food, he gave them water, he showed them signs, he did, he did miracles or he did wonders. What did he do? Right the way he went to teach the truth. And how much? The word says many things he thought. Therefore, Apostle Paul sets a pattern for us three years in a place at Ephesus. In Acts chapter 20 verses 28 through 32 and following, he says, I was there three years, day and night, teaching them the word of the Lord of God, so that I have not shunned to declare to them the entire counsel of Bible doctrine. Therefore, I could be pure from the blood which could be upon their own head. The same process in Colossians 1, verses 23 to 39. We read over here, at least a little part that I should pay to the church. The sufferings of my Christ, we cannot go through the vicarious sufferings. He says, the mental agony of my Christ, what he needs to pay to the church. And have you pays, making every believer perfect and complete and training them up in all knowledge so that we can make them to stand in the presence of Lord God the Father without blame, without spot, and agnacatas, without having any reproach. Why are you a shepherd to the sheep? To squeeze their blood? To drink their milk? 
to eat their flesh, to take over their wool and cover your coldness and warmness, you get you. What for your shepherd to the church? Can you say to the flock what they have been learned? At least one doctrine. There are many morons on this earth who do not even know the meaning of doctrine. And they say this doctrine is different. They want to judge that doctrine. The only doctrine for the church, which Lord God has designed for the human race even from the past, when they created the first Adam, till to the last, even into the millennium rule, is every day carrying your cross and following my Christ. It's every day coming and learning the word of the Lord of our God. That's the only doctrine he has designed for us. Doctrine meant to say teaching. Therefore, the psalmist says in Psalm 119, in verse number 12, O Lord, I bend before thee, I kneel before thee. Teach me, make me to learn to become your disciple. Make me to grow up in grace and to know what is the process of right teaching over a right pastor teacher who could train us up. Therefore, in Jeremiah 3.15, shepherds after my own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Malachi 2, 7, 8 through 9, he teaches to us very specifically. The lips of the priest shall possess knowledge and the people will come there to learn the word of Christ. The duty of Leviticus 4, why the reason the priest should be? So that the priest should teach the truth. They don't have any other work. Can't you read in Acts chapter 6 when we find... When there were a quarrel among the disciples itself, he says, Do you think we shall live the word of the Lord of our God in prayer and come to serve you the tables? Today the idiotic morons to call these pastors who call themselves as Ravidas, they came to serve the tables and not to serve my Christ. And there are the ravenous wolves under sheep clothing. If they were serving my Christ, they would exegete the word. They would know the importance, what Christ my Lord God has taught for them. They will be taught by the Lord, he says. If that's the case in Isaiah 54, 13, in comparison to John 1, 18, then Christ our Lord of God exegeted the word. Then how many people are in charge today really to exegete the word by knowing their boundary of horizon in 1 Thessalonians 5, 27 and to anagonisco to analyze and exegete the truth. Therefore, in Colossians 4, 16, we find the place at one time you exegete the place at another time, exegete. The place even at the lower editions when you go to read this, you exegete. And he says, take heed for the ministry which you have received by the Lord God and fulfill it, he says. The problem with us is we have to cross check whether you have received this ministry from the Lord God or have you come up disguising yourself to take care of the details of your life. Because as a Christian, as a pastor, you will get some offerings, no work of any labor to be done. You will be like a king over them. You will be a supreme over them. And what do you do? You say, if you don't give us tithes, you will be cursed. If you don't give us money, you will be cursed. If you don't give us such and such offerings, you will be cursed. And with the fear and the trembling, the flock will come. And the flock will become deceased thin and the pastor will become fat looking upon that belly itself we can say these are idiotic pastors they don't kneel before the Lord if they would kneel before the Lord they would know their belly is gone but these are sluggards dumb dogs foxes in the deserts cunning people greedy for money what compassion they will have on the church rather than squeezing them, rather than belt, belting and taking them from them with such emotional blackmails. And yet, you need to wait for the second word which Lord God will open in his second advent. The first word you have seen, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And on our behalf, for the forgiveness of our sins, crying out, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani. This is the first advent. In the second advent, he comes. When he opens up his mouth, the two-edged sword, he says in his description in Revolution 2 and 3. 
His appearance is like the two-edged sword. In Revelation 1 as well, we read that. The tongue of the learned being trained by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will be like the two-edged sword. It doesn't give you an option. It doesn't go to say, do such and such. You do that or you will perish. That's what it says. The great failure in 1 Samuel 15 we read. What did they do? They failed. Lord God said to destroy. He failed. Even an old prophet in 1 Kings 13. He was said, don't go. Young prophet was been deceived by the old prophet. Not even to drink or not even to take water from that. What did he do? He disobeyed. What happened? He perished. We cannot go against the word of the Lord of our God and come to compromise and say we will be an intermediary for you and between Lord God saying that like Moses and Samuel. No, now the order is only one thing. Repent or perish because you have grieved a lot, squelched a lot. Though you have been made the temple of the living Lord of our God, you haven't been worried. How much you are waxing, how much you are grieving, how much you are squelching, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And you want to die sin unto death. Lord God hasn't designed any believer to die sin unto death. It is your negative volition towards Bible doctrine to ignore and take the word of the Lord of our God. You are dying sin unto death because of your own lustful pattern of life. Not to honor neither river, Lord God. Are you showing the reverence towards my Lord God? If you would love my Lord God's word, you would tremble in his presence. You would understand the word Barak. You would know what is to kneel down. You would understand what is Isaiah 45, 23, when it says seven times, every knee will bow before me. You would understand that. And right then and there itself, we would tremble and fall in his presence. Lord, I am a such a grievous sinner, O Lord. That would be a voice. That would be the cry of humility. What else we can add to the Lord? Nothing but great failure, isn't it? He remembers us that we are of dust. If not, how we would survive? Before his righteousness and justice, no, un but no unbeliever could come. Because of his son, his love surpassing that standards after believing in Christ. He calls us to give you warning discipline. If you don't learn from the warning discipline, he will give you intensified stage of discipline. And if you don't even learn from the intensified stage of discipline, he will give you sin unto death. And many people are dying sin unto death. Before the prescribed time, the time for us is 100 years minimum. Not 70 or 80. 70 or 80, even that time is for those who are sinners, he says. But we have much to learn, we have much to expound, we have much to take. Your Neoniscus age, below the age of 40, if you would stand up there and learning the responsibility of the Lord God, He would cause you to learn this entire word from Genesis 1-1, depending upon your desire, because Lord God knows even the motivations or imaginations behind our thoughts, what we want to think. In comparison to those standards, you would look he would give you the desire to know because when you prove your love towards Lord God that you truly love him like the way how Christ asked Peter. Do you really love my Lord? Thrice he asks for his thrice denial before the cock could crew thrice. You need to prove your Agape standards before the Lord God and say, Lord, Agape standards, if the 35% of mark to be passed out of 100, Lord, I'm full of love now. I have 70% of marks. I cannot fail. That's what Christ asked him. Do you love me, Agape? Peter replies, I feel I love you, Lord, because now he has known his failure. Second time, again, he asks, do you love me? This time again, Agape. He says, yes, Lord, I feel I love you. Third time again now Christ asks, Do you really feel or love me? Then he's now silent. He says, Lord, you know all the things. Then he says, Go and feed, feed, feed. That's the burden, that's the compassion. What are we feeding today to the church? It's an open challenge of a question to this so-called denomination, so-called 
Pentecostal charismatic movement staff who think they're really doing the work of the Lord, who don't even dare enough to preach one hour in their life because they want to add entertainment. These are entertaining clowns for you with their gimmicks, with the standards of their tricks. And you know what Apostle Paul says in Galatians 2.5? Those smuggled in who have come to take away our liberty in Christ, we did not even make them to stand before us, not even one hour. Not even an hour. Not even an hour. If you don't continue to preach minimum one hour in your pulpits, Christ our Lord our God asks, couldn't you wait with me for one hour? Couldn't you wait with me for one hour in my prayer? Because when he comes the first time, second time, he sees them, they're sleeping. And then he says, the hour has come for me to glorify God the Father. Minimum one hour is the time that Lord God wants through his servants to preach. Minimum morning one hour, evening one hour. So that you could come up and match up the tithe of his time every day to give back to the Lord in preaching. And that too, if needed, the compulsory rule should be to kneel down and preach. Minimum two hours of 40 minutes or two hours of 30 minutes, whatever it could be for you, the tithe of your time, you calculate that. But I go on a larger extent, two hours, 40 minutes. If this is the minimum time, what Lord God demands from every pulpit to give at least one hour, then this charismatic Pentecostal crowds don't have any doctrine, don't have any stuff. The so-called false pastor teachers who have entered now under the title called as Revedas in our pulpits. They think holding a light in their hand, they can show light to the world, forgetting the true light in Christ, what they have to be to the world. They forgot that. They forgot the point, what the light they have to be to Christ. It's not as simple as good to teach to you. As Ravada has not been found as a pastor teacher legitimate title for you, so these people are just holding light on the outward appearance. And they think it's a trend now in the Baptist churches. Without being reverend, you cannot preach. Throw that stuff out from your mind. It's not Baptist standards or any other standards. What the Bible says, that's the ultimate standards. If the Bible calls you to be a pastor teacher, better be there rather than looking into the crowd and defiling yourself. Being one among them, the way how Saul was being persuaded by the people, he says. The King Saul, I'm not talking about Paul Saul. Apostle Paul, whose earlier name was Saul, because even we need to differentiate that in the present apostasy period. Because when they do not know there are 66 books in the Bible for the Protestants to preach, and if this man, being a moron who has been ordained, but though he got 49 marks out of 100, not even qualified to pass, 50 marks it should be. And if he says, 66 books are there, then even we need to tell Saul in the sense, he's a King Saul, the first Saul. Because again, the name of Paul before becoming Saul, before becoming Paul, it was also Saul. So they may get confused because both of them, they are the same Benjamite tribes. So we need to explain that as well. So the King Saul, the first king to Israel, what he was, the seen king, not the unseen king, the only unseen king, though whether we human race get into existence or whether it has been created, whether it has been not created as well, the only king ever reigns is Yahweh El Elyon Elohim. That's it. It is He, the name that has been revealed for us, a self-existent one. The world may think God is one, names are few, names are many, who cares? The concept is very simple for us. The only revealed God, the men on this earth reason under the sun. But Lord God says for us in Isaiah 48 or 45 as well, before the sun could be, it is I who gave you this knowledge. It is I who gave this doctrine to be revealed. And in comparison to what is true, the question asked by Piliath in John 18, we read in Isaiah 43, 9, when we get these people to come and reason and sit along together, and when we clear all their doubts, their myths, they would say, yes, this is truth. And they would know and take it and accept it. Yes, this is the truth. They would acknowledge it. This is the truth. 
because we know the church are the truth. So the way how King Saul was been persuaded by the flock, by that his men, he says, because of the men, I was been persuaded by the men to do this. No alibis will work. You may think it can work, but it will not. You may say, the way how, you gave me this woman to me, as Adam said to Lord, passing down the patsy. Even in Genesis 16, when Abraham went along into the operation Hagar, and there we look in the detailed study of that, which has to be in every pulpit. Detailed study is the order of the day, dear brother, and right from the beginning for this mankind. Detailed study. He says the woman from Hagar, the world, what she got married, she became a headache now. And this Sarah comes and asks to Abraham, and Abraham says, what you did, you did it. I don't know anything, you did it. You do whatever you want with that woman. <laughs> this is how they run out. Tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ, now they may cry out to, you, to say you, what a beautiful pastor we have, what a beautiful reverend we have. He has such a kind of a great theological degree. He has been having so much experience running in and around the world with so many countries at a very young age. When he prays, miracles happen. When he does, healings happen. When he do, and he can make us to show his miracles, wonders, signs. And you may be happy with that. And you may praise him on his face. <laughs> the same crowd for not being trained according to the word of the Lord of a God to perform his will, Thelema will, what he has designed for this mankind, that is to be disciple from growing there, to become grammatias, New Testament scribes, and in return making disciples of all the nations. Knowing not this purpose, neither the purpose of Mark 6.34, that is, he had compassion and he taught them the word of the Lord, many things, Neither aware about the great caution given to Peter, which is to feed, tend, feed. Bosco, Pyman, Bosco in John 21. Knowing not about these things. Even the Great Commission, they cry out, they say, now the translations have come to say, make all Christians. No, it has to be make all disciples. Matatias in the Greek. And the disciples were called as Christians in Acts 11 for the first time. Yet the place called as Antioch, you know that very well. So knowing not these things, you have entered into the pulpits. Knowing not these things, you have come to look that you are doing the work of the Lord. And you are feeding the pastor, doing him good things, making him to survive, making his potty belly to grow. And he comes eventually not even one hour to preach every week. And then, at the judgment seat of Christ, knowing your evaluation report, he would cry out now before God the Father, crucify him. Because he hasn't made us to be the disciples of the word of the Lord. And who are the people they are appointing a shepherd? The elders of the church. And there is a burden for the elders of the church as well. But after this prayer we shall continue. Infantry Divine Holy Father, as we go and share these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. For the elders, we find in Deuteronomy 27 8, if you want to be elder of the church, do you know what are your responsibilities? Do you know at least once what it is long back in the Torah? Even Ezra repeats the same thing. The divine wisdom, what Ezra has, the king says, you appoint your elder men according to the divine wisdom what you have. The king teaches to them that purpose. The divine wisdom what you have according to that you do it. And then from where he can get Ezra. Ezra has written the Torah. No, he knows he has to go back now to be a ready scribe. Ezra 7.10 and 7.25 He prepared his heart to know the will of Lord God the Father and he was a ready scribe says the word. And when he is a ready scribe, he has to take his information from where? From Torah. And this Deuteronomy falls into the category of Torah. And there we find the rulers, the elders, what they have to do. 
write, he says, not just to read. Christ our Lord our God asks in his hypostatic union in the humanity terrian terms, have you not swear about me? In Matthew 22 we read that. Have you not read about me? Have you not gone for analyzing and exegeting the word about me? Have you not had a topical study about me? But here he says in Deuteronomy 27, 8, to write, Kathab, being the elders of the church doesn't mean because of your age, your elders, because you're having something to start from your father and mother, you will be the elder of the church. Or it is your husband's dream and naming it on the name of his wife, the church, so you will be an elder. Throw that out, throw that stuff out. The elders of the church ought to be those who have written the law. And now it's the Bible. If the pastor teacher to be appointed by the elders, then this elder should know what is the word because when he's preaching the truth and if he doesn't have compassion towards Lord's flock, for what compassion? To teach them many things. We look today in the present Christendom, the apostles say, my Lord's wife has been ruined out. And none are having compassion except to grab from them their money and to beat them to pieces. They are eating what is good and right. And he says in Ezekiel 33, is it a small thing or Ezekiel 34? Is it a little thing? You take the best of your part and you trample the remaining thing under your feet. You drink the good of your water and you give them the foul water. How many times you need to look right from the time of the prophet's failure? The prophets, the way how they cried, yet they did not achieve. Today as well, we have the same thing. In 2 Timothy 4, 2, when Apostle Paul in his dying declaration says, Preach the word, Caruso ton lagan. Prove your Caruso that you have been sent by the Lord of a God. And he says, very specifically, he needs to teach about the mystery doctrine of the church age. And in Colossians 1, he talks to us what we need to make every believer. Teach them up, train them up, so that we could make them to be stand perfect and complete in all knowledge in the presence of Lord God the Father. And thus they should become disciples. And in return, they should grow to be the New Testament grammatias. And from there on, they should make disciples disciples of all the nations. This is what the present apostles are crying out through the word of Christ. And the pastor teachers have to study a diligent one and they need to teach to you this truth. And if the pastor teachers don't teach to you in these terms, they are not having compassion on the sheep. They are having compassion. The Greek word is splagne. And what they are having compassion? Splagne. The word meant to say for us. To move one bubbles with compassion. Because bubbles teach the seat of love and pity. Therefore, Christ, O Lord of our God, asks, You love me? Then feed my flock. Do you love me? Then tend my flock. Do you love me? Then feed my flock. So the bubbles, which is nothing but the heart, the lungs, the liver, which could be as a mercy, which could show forth them pity, and to have to show compassion. The same thing even in Lamentations, we find the word for compassion in the Hebrew, in verses 22. And the strong code number is Rakam. It is 7356. As cherishing the fetus, by extension the womb, he says. That's a very, very tender love. And because of his Rakam, we are not consumed. As the father pitieth the children, so he is pitying, as he says, even in the Gospels. 
If not, where would we stand? His compassions fail not, even the psalmist cries out. Because of such great mercies, we are not being consumed. If you are alive tomorrow, be aware in the presence of Lord God the Father to know that He has a purpose for you in your life. Be aware about that. He is having a great plan through you in this life. Because He can trust more in you than what the way Satan rebelled. And He says, You will not rebel. Provided you have been indoctrinated with the word of the Lord of a God and know that it shall not be hollow. Your inner man, your erratus, referring to it, not Adama, the outward structure. Your inner man cannot be hollow. If your inner man is hollow, your heart will melt. Your knees will not bend before the Lord. Your lions will not be gripped with truth. And your face will shine in darkness, in blackness, not in light. Where are you keeping the rakam of the Lord? What does your heart say? Does it cry out Bible doctrine? What does your liver say? Does it talk about Bible doctrine? What about your lungs? Do they think about breathing, inhaling and exhaling out the word of the Lord of a God? The main part in the body, the liver, what you know very well. Can it digest the word of Christ and give for you a great health? Can your heart circulate Bible doctrine? Can your lungs breathe the word of the law? That's the intestines, that's the bowels for us. That's the compassion, Rakham in the Hebrew. Because we all come from one womb, he says. Having that mercy, the tender care of a mother to the fetus. So Lord God is showing to us such great compassion every day. If you can beat up your son or your daughter, would you do that to kill him? Except some lunatics. Would you not have a tender care towards your children? Though the word says, though the father and mother may forget, yet I will not forget you nor forsake you, says the Lord. Because there will be many who have been bereaved in their childhood by their parents and mothers. By the parents, particularly the father may be good, mother may be not good. And you know right from where we get this failure, appointment of the elders who haven't written the word of the Lord, who haven't known the word of truth. They think they are elders by age, but they are not by spiritual maturity to be elders in the word of the Lord. If they would kneel down and write the word, they would know what is the power behind that. They would come to explain to you thoroughly what is the word behind that. And they would understand our responsibility because you think you may appoint a pastor. If the pastor is not having compassion on the flock to teach the word of the Lord of God every day, you're destroying from generations to generations. Thus your parents may be a failure so not to train up the children in the way that they need to go. And the children will get desecrated. The children will get easily spoiled. And thus the word says, though the father and mother may fail because of the failure of the parents, yet I will not. I will give you a right word. Come to me. That's the care I give to you. That's the compassion. That's the rakam he says for us. And how about your intestines inside? What about your bowels talking about? Do they take the word of the Lord of a God? Do they breed the word of the Lord of a God every day? Or do they have the love towards serving my Christ? Do they have that love? Christ our Lord of a God had such a great compassion for us. Therefore he says, I appoint you and give you the pastor teacher work. The duty of rightly dividing the word of truth. The duty of rightly learning the word of Christ. The duty of rightly teaching the great word of the Lord of a God to the highest. Because I have kept you in charge over my flock. 
how much pure we need to be in training up, how much pure we need to have our motivations, how much pure we need to be to make every believer perfect and complete rather than coming to the church for your money. And you know what compassion these people demand? How much salary will pay for me? What facilities you can give to me? What about my wife? I have two children. The salary what you're going is not going to enough. Do you think these have been sent by the Lord? No way. If they have compassion on the flock, they would first go and teach the word of the Lord of a God. And the divine enlightenment given to the congregation, Lord God would give them. Because of the piety, the pastor in charge, who is a mediator, he intercedes for them. And we read a great word in Genesis 17. On behalf of Ishmael, I heard you, he says, guard the father towards Abraham. Twelve princes will come, I shall greatly multiply them, they will have a great wealth. On behalf of you, I heard, because of your plea. But I made my covenant with Isaac, not with Ishmael, he says. So as a PT, Lord God would hear on behalf of PT's prayer to the congregation, isn't it? Then Lord God knows how to provide for the congregation, how to provide for the pastor, teacher over there. Why do you demand your money there? Freely we have received, let's give freely to the world. You may ask, what about our survival? <laughs> Remember our role model, Apostle Paul, what did he say? Work with your own hands. I was not burdened, I paid my rent with my own hands. I wanted them to come to learn the class, three years in a place, two years in a place, one and a half year in a place, one year in a place. I trained them up, trained them up, trained them up. With my own rent I paid. Neither I was burdened to anyone. Today hardly we find such PTs in our pulpits who could come and give freely the word of Christ. They don't preach these things, they don't practice these things. And they don't want to practice of making everyday teaching the word of the Lord of God in our pulpits. Thus they don't preach, they forgot the plan. And what did they come? They come up with their association, saying that we are Baptist associations, we need to be ravidized, forgetting the title which is legitimately given to the pastor, teacher, PT to preach the truth. If you are the shepherd for the sheep, appointed in the church, you need to teach the word. If not, there is no duty for you. The first and primary function of the pastor teacher to isolate, categorize and to exegete the word with proper dispensing technique of dispensations in the historical background, the culture, the context of the subject to study and to teach and terrify them in the present Christendom, what we are as Christian believers, the church age believers in the Lord. We are having something great for us to do in the church age. We are having something unique for us to do in the church age. As a PTs, you are greater than John the Baptist, but you haven't even qualified to be like Job. In comparison to Job, in comparison to Moses, in comparison to Samuel, in comparison to David as well, if John the Baptist is greater, then our position is greater than John the Baptist, then how much more we need to be as a true witness for the Lord God, rather than worrying about the details and cares of this life. Doesn't he say in Matthew 11, 21, come and learn from me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Cast all your burdens upon me because I careth for you. It is Lord God alone who will careth for us. Doesn't he teach for us in his gospels? By worrying, do you think you can even increase an inch? You cannot. Cast all your cares and burdens upon the Lord. And if you have any worry, care about, to look, Father, I need to complete this word. I need to understand about this word. Send me right past a teacher. I need to learn about this word. I need to know the purpose of my life. Train me up. That worry do you have? Not even an inch. Not even to a millionth of a millimeter you have that worry. For other details, your good cares, your bad cares, the details of life, the cares of life, we are so much worried. 
I don't deny that shall not be there, but you need to know everything will be in the will of Lord God the Father, in the plan of Lord God the Father, because Christ our Lord of God exemplified for us, Father only thy will be done. And Lord God in eternity past, before he could send us to this earth right now, what is my age, what is my time and what I'm talking, he knows that even the end from the beginning, and he knows what I will be, and what I need, what wife, and what the things pertaining to Bible doctrine, what children, he knows very well. So why a worry? He has taken complete care of our cares and has given in our hand to completely take care of his word. He has entrusted us with his word. And we don't take care of his word and we want to look to the cares of life though the Bible says I am there to take care of it. But you carry my yoke, you do my work. You want to give reasons like those three men in Luke 9. Someone said we will go and bury, but Christ says, follow me, let the dead bury the dead. Someone says, I will go on and give, I want to give and give back a good farewell to my family and I'll come back. He says, no, you're not worth. Do you know those three clauses of men? You're having those worries, throw it out, you're not worth. You don't have compassion upon the flock of my Lord. Neither you're qualified to be the pastor for the church. What alibis you want to keep? What excuses you want to rise? Who cares? Do you have really compassion upon the flock of my Lord? Can't you look when Christ our Lord of God says in Mark 6, 34, He had a compassion for the sheep without a shepherd. Straight the way He came to teach the word many things. Either you shall not have the potential to teach because you're not prepared faithfully to complete the word of the Lord of God by writing down at least once upon your knees. Or as the Bible demands to write down even the second time in the original language of the scriptures. Those who will not have compassion upon the flock. What you look, Elibes? What about my wife? What about my children? Lord, the way how Abraham has, Lord, is that Ishmael? Even in that chapter 19, we have great discussion, isn't it, about Lord? <laughs> you have all the time like a crybaby looking upon your safety, your family safety or security to use the word. Sometimes my English might be common because I am come from a very common background, isn't it? We are not so much of high language of English what the people would usually talk. So this common language, we say safety, but you may look your security, isn't it? So your security, your family security, your father, mother security. When Abraham was 50 years old, he went back before this promise could come for Lord's will in Genesis chapter 15. And when he believed for such kind of a great call in the Lord, at the age of 99 being taught one more lesson for him, from there on he goes even for the sacrifice of his son, when there was an examination proved by him to be called him as his friend. On behalf of us, Christ, O Lord of God, has passed the test. He has imputed for us his essence. His destiny we are sharing now, being predestined in the Lord. And we are sharing his essence. Lord God calls us his friend. Whatsoever he has mandated us to do, we shall do that. And that's proof of our love towards Lord God. Why do you want to worry on this earth for details of life? He has given in our hands the care of his word. Show forth through your heart the compassions of Bible doctrine. Teach them the truth. Not to be compassionate about your life. Look how bad it is. How irreparable damage these minds are doing to the Church of my Christ. Yet Lord God would reconstruct, renovate them. When we go to the judgment seat of Christ. But now it is the time for us to do and to make every believer perfect and complete. Without spot, without blame. And to be without any reproach in his presence every day. Think over this issues, dear brethren. Life is too short. 
Yet the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Do not go away, but rather come to know the truth. If you are still alive tomorrow, remember, Lord God has a greater purpose in you in your life. That's of the Lord of a God in spirit and in biblical truth. Not according to your translations, but according to the virginal language of the scriptures, what the Word teaches to us every day. Think over these issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. In the same divine sphere of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, reigning and training in truth every day to the praise of His glory. Remembering His compassions, Blagma and Rakham, let's come to do the will of Lord God the Father and pay back to the Lord that which is due unto Him. How many days they may be not compassion on the flock of my Christ, that is His Church. Let's at least begin from today, every day teaching the word of the Lord and do the will of Lord God the Father. And if there are no hearers, do not continue, do not worry. Record yourself in the YouTube as I do and put it. But we need to be answerable to the Lord to have compassion. It is His will to whom these recordings have been kept, it will go to them. In and around the world we have one platform through YouTube. And being thankful to the Lord God giving us to do right things in the right way. We shall walk breath by breath to the doctrine in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, getting honor to Him alone. So dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God, the Father, that to believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry us upon Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because of the amount of my witnesses where they have been called. The indwelling Trinity is number one Dharma to my witnesses and number two Dharma to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no ears, dear brother, not worry be such nature, the entire angelic coast will be our witnesses. And for the number one Dharma to my witnesses, Trinity followed by Bible in our hands, which has to be in our minds. So dear brother, do not worry. We have the work of the Lord of a God. We need to pray for the Lord God to send those harvesters who could do the work of the Lord more and more. If they're already here, we pray to strengthen them once again to have compassion upon the flock of the Lord of a God and teach them mystery doctrine of the church age. And dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word. Father, you have shown great compassion upon thy flock, O Lord, and taught them the word. In the great compassion and mercy in this prayer of paltry privileges, you have designed us the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to train this flock as well. Father, such as diligently, sovereign Lord, and save those in offense who reign us, Father, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. Because, Lord, thou alone shall reign forever and forever. Thou alone are the Father before the sunlight could come on this earth. And you declare to us the end from the beginning. The future things that are going to place in righteousness and in truth. Knowing that, understanding the fearful judgment that's awaited for us, if we don't do their word, do their work properly. Let's handle this word truly for the, for those people to whom you have given this bona fide gift as well, along with me. Give them the right mind to think and to come to the standards what is right and what is due in our pulpits to be fulfilled, rather than looking the things of this world and concentrating the things of this earth. Let them look thy heavenly things father and be renewed according to the standards of the truth in christ matchless pure gracious name we pray father help us to reconstruct our, our life back according to the great e icon image which you have made for us in the standards of andy kaya suni kai hosetus thesalatia in christ matchless pure gracious name we pray sovereign lord allow god the whole spirit and challenge us by this message